Welcome back fans for another exciting edition of Azure Data Factory with Mapping Data Flows. In this video, I want to talk to you about a scenario where you are loading data in your sync to an Azure SQL database or Azure SQL DW and you receive an error message back from the driver when you execute your pipeline that says that there's possible data truncation. And this can happen if the data you're trying to fit into a, uh, to a string or a binary field is larger than the column size in the database. And so to um, help you understand how you can work through this with an error row handling, I created a very, very simple uh, contrived demo database table, and I called it junk. We just have two columns, an ID and a name. I'm gonna try to squeeze movie titles into that name column. And my name column is only an in bar char five. So, you know, obviously a lot of those or most of those titles are going to fail when we try to fit those into that small column. So back into my data factory UI and on the data flow, as you can see, the title names obviously aren't going to uh, fit in there. So let's try to brute force all those into the uh, into that database table. So in this case, I'm just having a source of the derived column. The derived column is just um, casting, it's just a, essentially a typecast of the movie from a text from a string because it's a CSV coming in. I'm casting into an integer because I want to write to that table, which you saw had an ID field of an integer and a name which is the varchar 5. So mapping the title to the name and the movie to the ID. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go to my pipeline. I already ran this from debug because I have my debug on. It took about a minute to complete for the full setup and for the execution of the data flow. So what happened was it um, gave me an error saying that I had the string of binary data would be truncated. That's the error message coming back from the SQL driver. And because it failed, no rows are written. So right now I have an empty database. So the rows get written when you have that error. So what do you do? So that may be the condition you want. You may want it to fail. And that of course is a perfectly valid um, scenario. However, if you want to handle that and you want to log the rows that are truncated, what you can do is this. So let's go into um, a different data flow. So this is the bad rows, the one we just ran. Let's go ahead and move over into what I call the error rows. So this is that same data flow, but now with a conditional split. Uh, so notice in this data flow, I gave my derived, my derived column a nice name this time. I called it typecast. That's all the same, the same source data coming in as well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take those and I'm going to have a conditional split that's going to look for any column that is greater than that n varchar size. So we can look at your database, understand the target schema and table that you're writing to. So I know when I look at this, I can see that I need to have a string length that is less than or equal to five. And so it's very easy to code in data factory. So I create a uh, conditional split in my data flow. And my conditional split setting is to have two different streams. The first one I call good rows. And my uh, expression is simply the length of the title being less than or equal to five. If it is, then that's a good row. Anything else is considered a bad row. The good row is going to be the happy path and everything's going to be the same. I have my same right to database, which is a Azure SQL uh, sync. Go into junk table and the mapping is the same as before. The uh, title to name and movie to ID. The second, the bad row is the one that's going to fall if uh, fall into this stream if any length is greater than five. In that case, I'm going to write to a blob store. So I just have a simple folder. I'm going to create a single file. I'm going to call it badrows.csv. I'm going to do auto mapping on this because I want to have all of the columns mapped. I want to get the full information of which rows failed. All right, that's all you need to do. Now let's go ahead and let's run this pipeline again. This time I'll switch over to my error rows. This data flow right here. So let's go ahead and debug this. Now this will take about uh, one minute to have the full cluster uh, set up in the job execution that come back. So I'm gonna pause for about a minute and see on the other side. Okay, we completed, it took a minute as I suspected. Now before I show you the results, there is something I wanted to show you too. I wanna to go back into the data flow again. And I actually wanted to do this, but I forgot to. So on the data preview for the conditional split, just to show you what we're going to get, um, we do see, let me actually uh, refresh the data preview because the data preview will give you the count of the number of rows that you're going to get in each condition. So the conditional split is splitting the good rows and the bad rows. And I want to get a count on here so that I can compare that against the results that I get 
on the other side. So 444 good rows and the bad rows number, uh, you just down here in the selector because this is a conditional split, you, you choose the other stream. And now what Data Factory will do is uh, go ahead and query this and bring you, give you back the data frame results from the other um, part of your initial split. And 8,684 of those are gonna be failed. So obviously this is contrived so that we can see a lot of the uh, bad rows. This is definitely going to be a situation where you know the good rows are gonna be in the minority here. But in this case, the data flow succeeded. So instead of failing, our data flow succeeded and we're able to write um, both the uh, good rows to the database and the bad rows to the files. Let's take a look at our results. We should see 444 was the number of the um, succeeded rows. So I'll do a select and we do see, let me see if I can extend this a little bit for you, 444 rows and uh, we do see the results here. Um, the Essentially every title that was able to fit within five um, characters. And then the bad rows would go to the logging, would go to my um, go to my blob store. And so let me refresh my Azure Explorer and there are the bad rows and let's open that up. I'll just give it a second to download. So I'm gonna quick pause while it does that. Okay, the download is complete. So I'm just gonna drag it over to the screen and uh, we can see let me move this over this way. We can see all of the rows. We saw all the information of every failed row because the title was just uh, too large uh, for those. And so there you go. That's how you can protect against errors like SQL truncation within data flows.